Okay, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Mark Fellows, and I have a degree in electronics. I have a dual associate's degree. I don't have a bachelor's degree. I have a dual associate's with about 140 credit hours. I've worked um, in engineering for six or seven years for this one firm before they were bought out by a British company. I was a research and development electronics technician. I served as a um, test engineer. After that, I did mechanical engineering technical work. Um, right now, I'm a consultant. I do some work for, uh, for the U.S. government. I teach some courses and things on O-scopes and do some general technical work. And now, as promised, I am going to do a, or try to do a video on basic Ohm's law. Now, this is something that any electronics tech should really understand. There's a lot of people out there calling, them electron calling themselves electronics technicians, but they don't understand some Ohm's law. And for real electronics technicians, this is something basic that we all understand. So I thought I'd do a course on it. Um, it'll help you understand basic Ohm's law, hopefully. And for those that don't know, it'll, it'll explain it to them, maybe start them on a, uh, a course of learning over their lifetime. Anyway, here we are. I have a small whiteboard. I don't have a larger one. I uh, can't afford it right now, but I thought I'd still do this course. So I'm going to use theoretical resistor sizes. So, uh, you know, don't send me any comments that these aren't real resistors. Uh, the resistor sizes or values that I'm going to use are theoretical. I don't know if they exist or not. I don't really care. But uh, it's, it's very simple. Um, we'll go over some formulas and uh, let's see. Okay, three simple formulas that you need to understand before we move on. There are many formulas, but these are the three that you need for this lesson. The first one is V divided by R equals I. Now what that says is voltage divided by resistance equals current. The symbol for current is I. I don't know why. Don't worry about it. Now, there's another one, because you can derive everything from that one formula, of course, through mathematics, but we'll just go over it. So the next one is I times R equals V. So current times resistance equals voltage. Now, because of the first two formulas, it's obvious that if you divide volts by current, you get resistance. Voltage divided by current equals resistance. Voltage divided by current equals resistance. Now these are the three formulas that you need to know to understand basic Ohm's law. There's other ones. There's power equations. There's lots of equations when you're going to school to be an electronics tech um, if it's a good school. So we'll start with a simple diagram. I'm, I'm going to use, like I said, theoretical um, resistor values, but it doesn't matter. I'm trying to illustrate a point. So let's start with a simple DC power supply. Okay, and we're going to put three resistor values, theoretical resistor values in. Hopefully you can see that. Excuse my sloppy uh, handwriting. So we're going to make this 10 volts. DC. It doesn't matter for this illustration, but we're, if it's AC or DC. For this illustration, it doesn't matter, but we're going to use 10 volts DC. We're going to call this one R1. This one we're going to call R2. And this one we're going to call R3. Okay? Now, we're going to make this 3.3 ohms. And I'm using that because it's going to be easy to illustrate, and I'm not going to need to use a calculator. This one we're going to make 3.3 ohms. This one we're going to make 3.3 ohms. Now, going by the formula V divided by R equals I, we can determine how much current is flowing in this, in this circuit here, this very simple series circuit. So, we're going to take 10 volts, and that is going to be divided by R1 plus R2 plus R3. Okay? So, we have 3.3 volts. So, 3.3 volt, excuse me, 3.3 ohms, sorry about that. 3.3 times 3 equals 9.9. So, we've got 9.9 .9 ohms going from here 
to here. We're just going to, for simple sake, we're just going to call it 10 ohms, okay? So, how much current's flowing in this circuit? Well, we've got 10 volts divided by a total resistance of 10 ohms. So, 10 divided by 10, of course, equals 1. So we know that I equals 1 amp. We've got 1 amp through this entire circuit. Well, how do we find the voltage across, say, R1? From here to here, what's the voltage? Well, it's, it's simple, right? So we're going to take our formula that we have, I times R equals V. No problem. Now, after I'm done with this, I'll show you another way to do this. So we're going to take 1 amp, which is our total current through the whole circuit. So 1 times 3.3 ohms equals, of course, 3.3 volts. Simple. So we know that across this resistor, we have 3.3 volts. So since we know that we've got 3.3 volts, how much voltage do we have from here to here, from this node to this node? Well, we know that all the voltage in the circuit has to be accounted for. It's all in phase, and it all has to be accounted for. So we know, you know, after we find that first resistor, we know that if we've got 3.3 volts here, we have to have the rest of the voltage from here to here, right? So from here to there, we have 6.6 .6 volts. Now, so simple. Now, if you want to, you could have went through and said 1 amp times 6.6 .6 equals, of course, 6.6 .6 volts. But once you find the first resistor value, or the first, excuse me, voltage value in the circuit, you know that the rest of the voltage has to lie across this. Now there's another way to do it, which is the way I used in school a lot when I was taking tests. Um, I came up with this way. It's not anything advanced. I'm sure everybody knows how to do this. Um, since everything is, since voltage is directly proportional to resistance, it's, it's a very simple matter to get the, the voltage across any resistor in the circuit, right? So we know that we have 9.9 .9 ohms in this total circuit. So if we want to find the voltage across any resistor, we can simply divide this resistor value divided by total resistance. And that gives us what percentage of the total resistance value this is to this. Now, I happen to know without of course using my calculator that as far as you know all the voltage from here to here equals 100 percent of the source okay so we know that 3.3 divided by 9.9 .9 is 33 percent so you can simply take that percentage that you know is true sorry bad handwriting and divide it by the total source times 33% and that will give you 3.3 volts. Simple. So there's your first short lesson on Ohm's law. There's um, a lot of things I can go over but hopefully you can understand that and that'll tell you you know how this works. So let me give you an example that I was trying to explain to a technician, electronics technician at work that he didn't get and uh, I was a little shocked at this. Because as I said, all electronics technicians should, uh, should understand Ohm's law. We were checking cables. We were checking cables of 100 feet. And I said, you need to check them and see what the resistance level is. I said, I don't know what I said. You know, anywhere up to 20 ohms. He said, well, how much exactly do you need? And I said, it doesn't really matter. As long as they're, if they're open, you're going to know. Because you're going to see mega ohms. Three mega ohms, infinite ohmage. If it's 1,000 ohms, you know there's a problem. So, you know, it doesn't really matter in this case if it's 10 ohms or 50 ohms. I mean, it does, but it's not so critical. And here's why. Here's what I explained to him. This is a simple diagram, okay? So, when you're trying to read a sensor, let's say this is an accelerometer, which is actually what we're using. I'm not going to go over how an accelerometer is. I'll just tell you that 
based on the impact that this accelerometer sees, it produces a voltage. Okay, and you want to read that voltage and then you want to amplify it. And we're running through a 100 foot cable. Okay, and we're reading it in a data acquisition system. Now, I know through my electronics that when you want to read something, okay, on the input of your amplifier, you want, you want a really high resistance. You want infinite resistance so that all the signal that's produced here develops across your input amplifier. So I said, okay, we know that there's a lot of resistance here across this, the amplifier in this data acquisition system. Let's say it's a mega. Okay? So let's say there's 50 ohms here, which is high, but let's just say for giggles that there's 50 ohms here. So my question was, if you've got 50 ohms here and you've got one mega ohm here, how much of the signal is going to develop across here? Is most of it going to develop across here, across the 50 ohms, or across the 1 meg? And to my surprise, he said it was going to develop across there. Now, since you know that voltage is directly proportional to resistance, that was a mistake. Because if you've got 50 ohms here, and you've got 1 meg ohm here, all you, almost Okay, sorry about that. I, uh, this is the first time using this camera this, uh, to do longer videos. It beeped at me. I'm not sure if it shut off or what. Anyway, I'm going to continue on here. So, we had our accelerometer here, which gets impacted and produces a little voltage. You can think of that as a little AC source. So, the circuit I did before was AC, but we can... I'll do a DC equivalent circuit um, just to kind of illustrate what's going on. So we have our cable here and it's got some resistance in it. And then we have our big data acquisition system. I think acquisition is ACQ. Okay. So let's just pretend we have 50 ohms here. Now I happen to know, like I said, or maybe I didn't say, that on the input of an amplifier, you want infinite resistance. So, let's say we have one mega ohm of resistance looking in there. I know that it takes this little signal that's produced, this AC signal, that is the data acquisition system. It runs it through an amplifier and it amplifies whatever little signal is produced by this, this Excel. So I'm just going to say, I don't know what the input resistance is, but I know it's got to be high. Let's say it's 1 mega ohm. Okay. So going by the DC circuit that I just drew, where would you think that, the, that the, most of the signal would develop? Well, in reality, a very little bit develops here across this 50 ohm resistor, and most of it develops across the input resistance of this amplifier. So most of it's going to develop across here. So let me draw a DC equivalent circuit to illustrate what I'm talking about. So this is an AC um, signal, but we're just going to use DC just for fun. So I'm going to draw a DC source to help us understand this. I'm just going to arbitrarily make that 10 volts. In reality, that little uh, accelerometer does not produce 10 volts of signal. But for illustration purposes, we're just going to use 10 volts. So I said that that cable might have possibly, theoretically, 50 ohms. That's high for a transmission cable, of course. Um, for this application, TV um, coax cables are 50 ohms, um, a lot of them. But anyway, for this, that's high. Typically, these cables are 15 to 20 ohms. Now, I've got 50 ohms here across the cable, 
we're going to call this, that's supposed to be a resistor, RL. That's the input of the amplifier that is at the front end of that data acquisition system. Circuit, uh, a theoretical circuit would look like this. This is how you can imagine it. So, going by the example that I just showed you, if you've got 10 volts here and you've got 1 mega ohm here, or 1 million ohms here, excuse my drawing, very sloppy handwriting, how much of this voltage, where's the voltage going to develop? Is it going to develop here across this 50 ohm cable? Or is it going to develop here? Well, you know by the example that I just that I just illustrated that almost all of your voltage provided by this accelerometer, sorry, I forgot to draw it in, is going to develop across your load resistor of 1 mega ohm. You're probably going to get 9 volts, 9.9 .9 volts, whatever. Most of your voltage is going to develop across here. So, taking that circuit, that transmission cable, and knowing that your data acquisition system has an input amplifier that's supposed to be infinite resistance, you know that it's going to develop almost all your signal across the input of that amplifier. So this value becomes less critical. Now, 50 ohms is higher than I'd want in this cable. I mean, in theory, you'd want this to have no resistance, so all of your signal developed across your load resistor. But it's not as critical. Now this, this actually produces, you know, this might produce 10 millivolts or less. It might be in the microvolts, so it does become an issue However, it's not as much of an issue as you, you think. So it doesn't matter, I say 15 to 20, 20 ohms. It doesn't matter if it's 30 ohms, you know, somewhere around that ballpark. You know, I wasn't going to tell them, oh, okay, you need to cut it off at 22 ohms. Because, you know, if you understand how this system works, you know, it's not as critical. You just check it, the cable and you look for opens and stuff. But anyway, that's my first little illustration of basic Ohm's Law, and the reason I did this is because I wanted to. It keeps things fresh for me. It's fun for me to teach and explain things. Um, hopefully, it's of value to you, you know, if you're a budding uh, engineer or electronics tech or something like that. Maybe this will start you on a lifetime of learning. But anyway, if you have questions, write, write me. Um, I'd appreciate any questions. I'll try to answer them, and I hope you found this useful. Thank you.